up. Fields tapping it forward, jet sweep. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Fields. The Dolphins get there this time and they bring him down. Bradley Chubb able to record his fifth sack of the season. Fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. Back deep is Tyreek Hill. He steps into this one and this is a rocket. This is taken at about the 14. A terrific return. 30 yards all in all. And it'll be Dolphin football. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. They begin with a run by Mixon. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Here's Lance to throw it. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late, and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. Throwing his lance on third down. He's going to look deep down the field. And that will be incomplete. Oh, he left that one in a bad spot, but fortunately it's just an incompletion and not picked to bring up fourth down. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. for their next drive, the Bears offense. Three and five is where they sit on the year. A very uneven start is certainly not an ideal position to be in at the halfway point of the season. At a CD, do you see an avenue where they can still be a playoff team, or is that ship sailed? Well, since you took me to the nautical side, I'm going to try and keep up here because, to me, this ship is about ready to pull out of port. These next couple of games are absolute must-wins for them. Now, if they can win a couple, get to five and five, Maybe they start believing in themselves, but a loss here, that would move them to three and six. And if that's the case, well, that boat is going to head out to the harbor with them still on the dock. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That play over before it got anywhere, thanks to Christian Wilkins. The Bears at three and five, two games under 500. Now they were losers last time out, trying to turn things around here in this one. And it always helps to have a home crowd behind you, giving you encouragement as long as you give them something good to cheer about. So you know they just want to come out and play well for their faithful, and I expect them to do just that. On second and 12, Fields. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. A gain of 32 that time. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Fields leaving it with Montgomery here on the option. 
And he goes down at the 26. A pickup of 13, and that last play began at the 13. First down. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. This defense for the Dolphins, they were terrific a week ago in that win over Detroit. And I think our statistician ended up having to bring the blue tent and put it around him for a while because he was developing a hand injury from having to write down all the turnovers this team forced. Five, six, seven, eight. Absolutely unbelievable. I hope he'll recover. And the Bears are going to have what looks to be a first and goal as he'll take this down to the 10-yard line. A much different second drive here, Charles. They go three and out the first time. This time they've been able to sustain something downfield. And that's what often happens. You get the game started. You know, you have to get your footing underneath you. You have to get used to the flow of the game, the speed of the game. And sometimes that first drive is more of a probing drive. It appears they found something here in the second one. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. The defense was ready for the run pass option. Diagnosed it perfectly. Not only did they stack him up at the point of attack, but he was met by a host of light-colored jerseys. On second down, Montgomery. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Bears are on the board first here this afternoon. The point after through the raindrops, something good. And that makes the score 7-0. Santos to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here we go. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And Charles, if the season ended today, it's not going to. We still have December Yay, left. More football. We're only in November. Uh, but they would be a wild card team. And that's great. They'd be in the playoffs, but you know they're trying to bump up to be one of those division leaders. That guarantees you at least one home game in the playoffs, and that's what you're really seeking. But there also isn't much margin for error for this team, right? Because right where they're sitting, a two-game losing streak can have them out of the playoffs, so they've got to make sure they continue to keep the momentum going. Absolutely. There's some sharks smelling blood in the water behind them. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time you wait for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Lance. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Now a play fake. Lance. They're going deep for Hill. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that would be the last shot that they take in this game. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. They're going deep for Hill. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. 
Well, Charles, he's still a young signal caller in this league, second year in the NFL. And I don't know if last year as a rookie if he would have worked through his progressions like he did on that touchdown pass. I think you're right about that. We're seeing him grow up right in front of our eyes because when he went to his primary read, he recognized that they were all over that. So he continued to survey the field, picked up another target, delivered a pass exactly where it needed to be. A very mature play for the second-year quarterback. And he's going to be taken down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And that last touchdown drive they had very balanced. How key is that balance? It's huge because most of the time when we talk about balance is run, pass, almost 50-50. But most of the times when you talk to offensive coaches, they say balance is we do what we want when we want to. And that means that they're ahead of the defense, keeping them on their heels. Yeah, they imposed their will on that last drive. They'll fake the handoff, now Fields. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side. And all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Throwing on third down, Fields. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And a points result, we'll call this play significant. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense that next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? And he'll get this down close to a first down at about the Dolphins' 43-yard line. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. Here it's third and two. They'll send a receiver here in motion right. Third and two, Fields. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Keon Crossing. And the Dolphins are going to have the football here at their own 18-yard line. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about it. he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. Partner, what we're seeing so far is that defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw it through contact and short of the sticks. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Lance going to throw. Going deep downfield for Ross. Well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Bears are going to take possession of the football. And I think this is a situation where a quarterback coach in the sideline is going to talk to a single caller and say, listen, it's third and long, and it's still early in the game. Let's not force things here. If we don't feel good about it, let's just check something down and pump the football. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. 
And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. That one, a first down pickup of eight. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. And he is going to lose yardage here. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Well, that kind of hit will certainly fire up your team, both on the field and on the sideline. Tackles for lost yardage, they're always welcome. Ran it last time, now fields to throw. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sacked back at the 29. Sacked by Andrew Van Ginkle. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. You change the blocking schemes. Maybe go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. And Santos yanks that one a bit. No good. Wide to the left for Santos. And this is going to remain a one-point game. Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I'd feel very confident about this kick. But let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. They faked the handoff. Now Lance. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. But he certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. To throw once more on second and ten, Lance. That one complete to Hill. He's got room at the 30, and he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 25 yards there on the catch and run. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 27. From the gun to give to Mixon. And he is not going to go anywhere. They're going to get to him behind the line, and that is going to get us to the two-minute warning. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. On play action, Lance. This is caught. And they are able to stop it, but he does take it all the way to the two. They'll give it to Mixon. And he is in. Touchdown, Miami. Joe Mixon, his 11th rushing touchdown on the year. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. They'll let Mixon try to run it in. And he got it on the touchdown run, but he won't get in here. He'll be stopped short, and they'll come up empty on the try for two. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears' offense. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You know, always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test 
the mental processes of the team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, and he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. David Montgomery with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Bears have retaken the lead. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and the lead is now two. Now, after the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. Takes it at the seven. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. It was still more than a minute to go and a half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. They're going deep for Hill. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Michael O.J. Mudia. And the Bears are going to get the football here at their own 40-yard line. So they tried to take the deep shot there, but this defense up to the task. And a lot of times when you air a ball out like this, if it does get intercepted, there's going to be a lot of space out there to set up a return. And remember, you've got five big offensive linemen out there playing on their feet in open space. Not a skill most of them possess that allows for extra yardage on the return. On first down, Fields. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, first the ball free, and it's second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Here's Fields. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. To throw his Fields. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And this returnable for Hill. A nice return there of 11 to help mitigate a good punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Lance now on first down. They're going deep for Hill. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I've got a good friend in football, always talks about predictive history. He's got one of their two touchdowns. You can understand why they tried to find him again. Weren't able to connect, but the thought, that was good. To throw again on second down. Lance, he lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Jalen Waddle in the final seconds of the first half. And the Dolphins have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. Lance going to try to throw for this. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. 
so unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst, and if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Another good run for him. What else is new? That'll put him right at 150 yards for the game. So he's really made his presence felt in this one. Final shot before the break. Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Ready up. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. This offense set to begin the third quarter. And Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead. And they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game. So probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one. So now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it and try to win this ball game. It looks like a loss of right around 11 there on first down to set him back on second. Throwing on second and long, Lance. And going deep for Hill. And Lance throws the interception, his third. And the Bears are going to take possession of the football. That is a tough way to start the third quarter. You get the football, open it, drive it down, put it in the end zone, and take the lead. Instead, they give them the football. And I think the key here is for them to not get discouraged. That is not how they drew it up, not how they saw it in their mind. But there's a long way to go in this game. You know, they've just got to find a way to come back one play at a time. Yes, it's a cliche, but they can get it done. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. It's a gain of maybe three, but it's going to leave them with still about eight or nine to go on third down. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. The fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. From the left hash, this from 46. Santos' kick is up and through, and that'll bring him back within a point. So the interception set him up a terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this a pretty simple partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say we should have done better there. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Come on, 
The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best of the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. And it's no good. It has not been his day. That's the second extra point he's missed so far. some frustration after the PAT miss. This one fielded at the five. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Here's a ball thrown right side and complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. They run on first down as they get about three. Second and seven, forthcoming. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Play action. It's Fields. And quickly, he just gets that ball out of there. Not quite sure what he was doing, and here comes the flag. So now it's third and long, because remember, they also lose a down on the grounding call. Now Fields. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Troy Apke. And the Dolphins are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. Charles, whatever's going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is the six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, the quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. Got a man, it's Ross, complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 
A good pick up there, 26 yards. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. A handoff to Mixon. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Back to Mixon on second down. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. Once again, they run with Mixon. 45 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. Nixon running wide side, and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. And now can they reverse the trend on third and goal with the last two plays having gone backwards. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Dolphin football. It's also Dolphin lead to begin quarter number four. Let's go. Ultra, ultra. They'll run with Mixon. The run is turned away on fourth and goal from the two. And the Chicago defense able to come up with a goal line stand. So that's a decision that could loom pretty large here. They go for it on fourth down, but come up empty. But I actually like the call, and the reason? It shows me a head coach has faith in his team overall, first on the offensive side, thinking they can pick it up, but also knowing that he has faith in his defense that if they don't, they'll go out there and stop them. I like the confidence he showed. Oh, and this is going to wind up a safety. So that a double whammy. Not only do you have to give away the football, but the two points, that means this is now a two-score game. Yeah, and that's tough to deal with, isn't it? This little time left, those two points, doesn't seem like a lot, but it means everything now. Those are going to be the ones we're going to look back on. Those two points right there, you play the game. at the line ready for their next drive turnover that just got him the football back obviously a big one because had they been able to score on the other side this would have been a one possession game so you don't sense full relief here though. no i don't think especially with the ball this deep in their own territory because you make a mistake they've got it right back in prime position they certainly do so now almost like you know almost like a four minute offense right here take care of this bad go. boy make sure the other team doesn't touch it but move it with consistent gains we're down the clock and make them use their timeouts in this situation. The throw over the middle, taken in. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Marking down at the 49. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. Throwing now is Lance. And that is incomplete. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. And they'll send the slot in motion left. Play action, now it's Lance. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. I 
I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. The Dolphins on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and ten. Finding Waddle crossing the field and bringing it in. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 38-yard line. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because, to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 38. Here's a give to Mixon. Busting through contact. Just wasn't a huge hole there for him to operate. Stop just inside the 35-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. Here's Lance. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense. He's passed few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. And they'll go for it. Lance. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Brandon Jones picking it off. And the Bears are right back in this football game. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you think maybe you're just sitting on it trying to drain some clock. It's almost like they felt like, hey, we've got a good cushion. We can keep pressing it. It ended up costing them. And he'll lose yardage here. Back to the 15. Boy, the pursuit there, terrific from the linebacking core. Oh, it certainly was because so many times on an option play, You'll see a linebacker make a beeline for the quarterback and then zip it. One cut. Oh, Fields is intercepted for a third time. Eddie Jackson picks it. And the Dolphins are going to take possession of the football. Boy, so another interception, CD. And it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. Nixon will try the right side, and yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Lance looking to throw it. And it's caught. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. On the ready. 
But I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here in third and one. To throw, it's Lance. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked up by Dane Crookshank. And the Bears are right back in this football game. And you have to wonder, Charles, a game like this, five interceptions, what does this do to the psyche of a young quarterback? Well, based on the fact that he's still out there and he threw a fifth interception, I'm wondering if his head coach believes that he's really strong mentally and wants him to play through it. Because otherwise, you need to get him out and fight another day because this could leave lasting damage if he keeps throwing interceptions. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Call it a loss of five, a big sack to bring up third down. So now following the sack, Fields and the Bears looking at third down and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And this one incomplete. And another throw that really could have been, maybe should have been intercepted. That would have been number four. Instead, it's fourth down. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. Fourth down. Fields has to have this one. They're firing a deep ball for Komet. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The Bears tried it on fourth down, unable to convert. And now the football is going to go over, already being placed at the 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Joe Mixon, he scored on the ground and through the air. And the Dolphins add on to their lead, and they are also closing in on a fifth straight victory. They'll try and throw for it. Escaping the pressure right. And he will get into the end zone to bump the lead up to three scores. After the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory, but it does not appear that that's going to be the case. There's too much to handle on the other side in this one. Pass to the right. There's Jones. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a stoppage, and oh, we've got Chubb shaken up on the play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Now it's Fields. Uh, nowhere for Fields to turn, and down he goes. Melvin Ingram dropping the hammer off the edge. But one thing I do know, these guys on defense, they don't want this game to end. They're winning by multiple touchdowns. They've shut down the opposing quarterback in a big way, and they're still picking up sacks as we approach the end of this one. Throwing on third down, Fields. 
And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Keon Crossan. Gosh, you add up last week and this week now, that's nine interceptions in this two-game stretch, and we're not done here. It's almost as if they can't believe their eyes. Or maybe, partner, is the confidence level in him so high that they believe he'll get out of it and make plays for them to win a game. Well, they've said they believe in him. That's being tested right here. Flushed out right. And he will not throw it away. He goes out of bounds, well shy of the line of scrimmage, so that's a sack. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. So when the defense complains about having to do pursuit drills in the heat of training camp, Ready. plug in this play. Excellent pursuit. Force the quarterback out of the pocket. He ends up trying to run for it. Instead, he goes out of bounds and loses yardage. That goes down as a sack for the defense. Blitz coming, and down he goes. They'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. The offense on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and forever. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. And they fake the handoff. Now Lance. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had it and dropped it. That is an unforced error there, and it takes away what could have been a touchdown. and company going on fourth down. And incomplete on the deep ball. The Dolphins can't convert on fourth down. And the Bears will get the football back. So they were really trying to put the nail in the coffin there already with this lead here in the fourth. But they didn't get it. Guaranteed, it's not going to be a fun handshake in the postgame, right? <laughs> you just know that there's going to be some bad blood there. And I know if we go to the postgame press conferences, the, the winning coach, you know what he's going to say? Why he did it? We need the points, okay? Because you never know at the end of the year if points are going to come into the tiebreaker if we're trying to get into the playoffs. That's always the standard justification. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Fields on third down. And he fires one, but incomplete. Well, we've talked about it, CD, but it bears repeating. They are struggling to throw the football. All the interceptions and more incompletions. It just doesn't look like things are in sync out there. I would agree with that, and it's not a good day when you feel like an incomplete pass is almost a win for you because it wasn't intercepted. And I think the receivers now, when they're running their routes, they want to catch the ball, but they also want to make sure that the defenders don't take it away. They snap it to Fields. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, Chicago. Jarnell Mooney, 62 yards. And the Bears have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. You got to understand situational football because they're playing with the lead here late in the ball game. So the back defender 
has got to be as deep as the deepest receiver. Keep everything in front of you, rally up and make the play. Yeah, you would think they had the three-score lead. Now it's down to two, but three-score lead here late that they wouldn't give up a big pass play like that, but they did. Santos with the extra point, and the lead is trimmed down to 10. Touchdown here, Santos to kick this one away. Short, short kick. One of the up middle taken down. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively they do have all three timeouts but very little reason to use them at this point. And now a throw on first down there but it's incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble really. Going deep downfield for Ross. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, he leads the NFL in interceptions and nearly added to that total. Got his hand on it, couldn't quite corral it. It's been a Pro Bowl-type season for him, and the term ball hawk really comes into play, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that one a lot because teams want to avoid that type of a player. But sometimes you just can't. He just knows where the ball is. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Now, if you're going to get rid of it, you better get outside the pocket. Yeah, you have to get outside of that tackle-to-tackle -tackle box, right? Get out there, and then you can do it legally. But he wasn't able to do so, and they end up losing the down as well. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. And from their own end zone, it's a fake. Oh, and this turns into a mess as it's intercepted. Inside the 20. So the fake punt, a daring call this deep in their own end, and the end result, certainly not what they were hoping for. I have to admit, I admired their daring, but I actually would like this play call better if it's between the 40s here. The problem is, even if the ball's not intercepted and it's just incomplete, you're still giving away half a field worth of possession. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. All eyes on fields. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Troy Apke. And now look at him go. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. Well, this secondary just continues to be a force. Multiple interceptions in this game, and now the pick six. And the thing about it is once you get an interception as a unit, you think to yourself, okay, we got that. How do we increase it the next time? Get the interception, do a little more damage, and there's your outcome right there. Take it to the house and break down what they're trying to do offensively. And Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ballgame. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.